Thanks, Rob, and thanks for the Godly Gateway for inviting me down to um, discuss schools and under 18s with you all. Um, we, we think at, at Bowles Victoria and Bowles Australia that it's a, a really integral part of um, you know, keeping, keeping our membership um, as youthful as possible and bringing new, new young members to um, you know, be future uh, coaches, future administrators of the club, uh, board members, and um, obviously players as well. Um, so this slide, although you might not be able to see it from back there, but this is our 2017 in school bowls. So I guess with 2017 in a nutshell, we really increased um, the standing that we had with school bowls. And I guess we, we put school bowls on the map by creating our first um, statewide primary school competition. So, um, but I'll start with ja Junior Jack Attack. So we had uh, 3,738 students participate in that in that program, so that was well above our previous year. Um, we've got clubs starting to link with with schools, and um, it doesn't have to be every single school in their immediate region. We, we're finding that clubs are starting to link with you know the school around the corner. Um, Bunning Yong Primary School is a classic example. So. They had never had contact with Bunning Yong Bowls Club before the um, School Sport Victoria um, connection started, and now they're going there every year. And, and Bunning Yong competes in that program. So, um, but they started out with the Junior Jack Attack kit. School Sport Victoria Bowls, as I mentioned, so we've got both a primary stream, um, so prep to grade six, uh, but it's more for the upper primary, so year three to six after they've had. Um, exposure to a junior jack attack kit and then our seven year seven to year 12 so that's more secondary school bowls um, and I'll speak about both those competitions later um, we just had the Western Metro region competition and um, we had a couple of our Victorian state bowlers uh, from Bacchus Marsh College win through to that so there's different areas of the, the state that are running these type of programs and they're really they're really great and really kicking off so it's good to see. Our All Abilities Bowls program, we had um, Deer Park and Darabin um, do some stuff in the north with different specialist schools that we have around the state. Um, and then in the south, we had City of Frankston, Ashburton and Donvale complete um, sessions. The, the sessions there are used uh, pr predominantly with the Junior Jack Attack kits, but also the um, small size bowls. Um, and yeah, we have some significantly good bowlers coming out of that. Um, that rose, so I guess 175 students were participated in the Southern um, Comp, and then we had 110 students coming um, every week to, to Deer Park and, and Darabin City, and, and we culminated in a state final at the end of 2017, and we had the best of the North playing the best of the South, so um, it was fantastic to give um, Waringa Park uh, Specialist School, just in Hoppers Crossing. They actually won our first state final, so they were wrapped with that. Um, and then School Sport Association of Victoria, so they, I'll speak about this a bit later as well, but these, these guys sit outside the School Sport Victoria, so you might have, might have heard like your, your grammar schools, your Catholic schools, your um, private schools, like those types, they're all running their different competitions now. Um, we, we've got about 75% of those competitions now, um, now running. So there's actually a pathway for bowls for all those schools. Um, and then I guess following on from that, there's the local club that they can now connect to as a result of having a good first impression of bowls. Our Victorian School Super Series is the last point. So this is the first time we ran, ran that. Um, 2017, uh, we had... Uh, it was a school in Fertry Gully win that. They, they actually won their Catholic schools competition. And then we played the Victorian Super School Super Series, which had the best of the best schools. So that was a statewide initiative that um, we created. And um, yeah, we're hoping to continue that on next year. This session, um, I wanted to kind of put it into five clear points. Um, Alignment with your Northern Gateway Bowls Region goals that you have on the, the website, and obviously um, there's one clear um, goal and objective to do with junior development, so I really wanted to hone in on that and make sure you guys had something to go away with. 
Um, Bowls Vic and Bowls Australia current program, so that'll be your Junior Jack Attack, your School Sport Victoria, what are they actually? Um, we'll go into more detail. Essendon Bowls Club, <coughs> excuse me, and Fitzroy Victoria Bowls Club. Uh, just wanted to hear, or you guys to hear a bit about what Wayne and Peter have been doing, how they got started, um, the successes that they've had, and, and you know what, what they're planning to do in the next little bit. Um, and also the links that they've made. Club environment and benefits to clubs. So I think it's really important, um, and I guess it, um, Essendon and Fitzroy Victoria both, their club environment is really crucial. So that we'll go into a bit more detail, but that's really something about welcoming, being a welcoming club. It's the things you do on the on the inside, how how you you're greeting juniors, you know the opportunities and follow up opportunities you give them. Um, I think that's really important. And then I guess the next steps and kind of giving your club if you haven't previously done much with schools or juniors or have, have only had them in once or twice, how to, how to get involved and then I guess giving yourself a self assess, assessment about how, where your club stands and do you have these little bits and pieces in place in order to facilitate the juniors. So. You heard of Junior Jack Attack? You all have tonight, really. Which one of your clubs has actually got a kit? Oh, we've got those. You've got a loan set at the moment. Yes. So, who hasn't got a kit? Well, you better get one, Keelor. There you go, catch. You pass it around. So, Bowl Australia came out uh, with this Junior Jack Attack kit about five years ago. Um, uh, it actually allows us to take bowls anywhere now. So obviously we can take it to schools, uh, we can take it to shopping centres, we can use this to take bowls anywhere because it bounces, it doesn't hurt, it's soft, it looks like a bowl, it turns like a bowl, it is a bowl, but it's not a real one, obviously. So it's a great product that we can use. If your club are uh, having uh, a whole heap of families come down and you're a bit scared, oh, we don't want to let the kids go out on the green because they're going to wreck our green with the, with the traditional bowls, well, guess what? You can send them over to that green, get the kid out, give it to them and let them go for their life. They're not going to do any damage to the green because they bounce, they're soft, and the kids go for their life. They make all sorts of fun, fun games through using the kit. So we have the kit bag here. So if you want to come down and have a look later. So what you get is you get 32 bowls, you get some mats, you get some jacks, you get some cones. So how do you get one of these kits, Sean? You would, you would go to the Bowls Australia website. You can, you can buy it from there, or you can ring up Bowls Australia directly and they'll be able to put you through to the right person and get you the right price. So they're about $500 for a kit. So you get 32 bowls, you get all, all of it in there. And you can even get a scoring wedge. That's an additional cost. Now that we can take bowls anywhere, the Australian government have set up what they call the Sporting Schools Program. That means they are funding schools with finances to run sporting events or sporting programs within their schools. So as bowls, we are using the Junior Jack Attack kit for schools to get the funding that they can then run bowls at their school, uh, either using teachers or qualified coaches from us um, on the ground to promote bowls, introduce them to the sport. So like Barry Lester, like he, he started when he was 11, he started through his school program and through his family, and now look at him, now he's playing for Australia. So. That's, that's where we need to go. We need to get into the schools, promote the sport so they can learn to love it, learn to, to uh, hopefully become our Australia's next representatives. We've got our primary and secondary competition, as I mentioned. Um, the primary school competition is basically all the schools, so any primary school you can think of most likely competes in this competition. The secondary, you're probably looking at about 95% of them um, around the state. Um, the exclusions being those, those Catholic schools, grammar schools, private schools that come under the other banners. There's eight regions in School Sport Victoria. Now, in the Northern Gateway, we're probably crossing between a couple of them. 
School Sport Victoria regions go through council boundaries, so there'll be some that, um, as we found out, Wayne, some will be in the western metro region, and some will be in the in the northern metro region. So it just depends where your club is located, but all clubs have an opportunity to participate, and all regions have an opportunity to participate in both primary and secondary. So that's what we give the, um, the teachers before they um, start getting into bowls and you know are just finding out a little bit about it. But um, we make it really easy for them. So they, they pick up a Google form that they can simply just log in on whatever device they're using. If they want to enter teams, then they just click what region they're from. And that's where, that's where you guys come in. So that's when we look for clubs to host events and um, I guess the, the ones that have, the clubs that have reached out and, and run successful junior programs have just simply asked. In terms of the primary school competition, so conditions of play, it's two bowl fours, they play across three rinks, um, so teams of 12 and we do that simply so they can take 24 on a bus, so they can take two teams with them. Um, they play five ends or 40 minutes, whatever comes first. The division events, which you'll see in a minute, uh, they're really flexible. I mean, sometimes we would play shots, um, if that's more comfortable to a club that's hosting, um, or we do kind of closest to the jack gets one point and you just play on ends. Um, but the kids usually love it if they get a scorecard in their hand and they're filling it out themselves. So it's a bit different because there's less secondary school um, schools in the state uh, that come under the um, School Sport Victoria banner. We just play a region event. So I mentioned the Western Metro region; they had their day today, but um, the North will have one on the on the 21st of March, um, and then we'll have some in the state as well. And eight teams will get to go to that that state final in in May. So how do the teachers get involved? Well, it's, it's much the same with their Google Forms. So they simply log in um, to our Google Drive form. They click what they need to click. They fill out their details. They pick what, a, what event they want. And then we have a tick box on there that says, are you connected with your local bowls club? If they hit no, that's where the light bulb goes off and then I'm coming for you guys, okay? To see if we can connect the two of you. And that's how we got Bun and Yong to um, connect with their local club. The rules and conditions of play, so it's a little bit different. Teams of three for um, the secondary school club, and they play two bowl triples. Um, so they play an hour <coughs> or um, or 12 ends, 10 to 12 ends. It just depends on the, the region event that's been run. Here we go. Uh, junior bowls at Essendon, I guess it got its kick off when um, Rob was president of the club about three presidents back and the first thing he did was 
to develop a five-year plan that had junior bowls as a part of it. So, and we've we've <coughs> kicked the from there. So that's the first bit of encouragement I'd, I'd give everybody: think big, think ahead, and make sure that there is something um, dedicated to the the advancement of junior bowls within your club. Um, second thing I'd second thing I'd say is that um, within your club you really need a person who's um, committed to junior bowls, um, who can get out to the schools and make the contacts, and who would be available, who, who is going to be available to run and coordinate days at the club, um, and give that person every support that you possibly can. And I've been lucky to have that at Essendon. Um, uh, where we're heading, I guess my ultimate dream would be to have an Essendon Premier, Premier League team that's got at least one ring of kids that started the bowls at Essendon. Um, but that's kind of way, way, way down the track. We're, we're, we're nowhere near that. We're still putting building blocks in place and we're still building links to the community. One of the first things that we did was to apply for some grants from... Where are you going? Uh, probably the other one, the, the government oh, big, health. big health grants um, that helped us to buy two of those junior jack attack kits and I would really recommend them. Um, I've used them on polished floorboards at one school, I've used them on synthetic tennis courts at another school, um, I've used them in an outdoor um, undercover play area at another school. Um, they really are very flexible um, and the kids do love them. Um, right that I've got, as I said to Paul before, some of them tend to get a bit worn out and useless and I haven't been able to source any replacements, so I'm on the phone to you tomorrow. Um, um, there's 32 bowls in the kit. My advice would be to get two kits because one kit for a grade is, is not enough. Um, and I know it's a bit more financial outlay. Uh, we've also used them in school holiday programs at Essendon on carpeted surfaces. Um, so like I said, they are very, very flexible um, to be able to use. Um, we're a bit fortunate at Essendon. Uh, where we're geographically located, we have Essendon Primary School uh, directly across the car park and directly across the, the road we've got um, Henley and Essendon Grammar, the boys' junior campus. So there was our first two target schools and Essendon, Essendon Primary have been great. Uh, they participated in the... Um, Primary school in the primary school sports challenge last year. Uh, they, they finished third. They were in a different side of the competition to the, the mob at Tarang. Um, they finished third on the basis of about two hours coaching. Um, they've been very involved last year and there's been a few other spin-offs the, for the club too. They, um, their teachers get together and come over and use our bar facilities on a Friday night and Without our bar facility, I think, think the bar. Without them, I think our bar would go broke. <laughs> so, um, and if you've tied the hall out for um, for grade six graduation, so there's been a <coughs> bit, of, bit, of, bit of give and take. Um, I think they used our storeroom for to store stuff for their school fate overnight um, for last year too. So, um, um, <coughs> look, the best link. The bit, the best resource I could say for getting into schools, every primary school in Victoria is associated, is part of a, a local sports network, um, local school sports association. I think the same applies to secondary schools. Um, so my advice is to find out who the secretary of the local sports association is. Um, Sean's got some contacts for that. Um, get, get yourself invited to a meeting, say, hey, listen, I'm Wayne, I'm from Essendon Bowls Club. Um, this is where we are, and these are some of the things that we do. And go in your, go in your club uniform, um, because that does create an impression. Um, it indicates that you know, I was going to say Jack off the street, but that's probably the wrong term. Um, no, Johnny, come late, you, you really are representing somebody. Um, and I think that's pretty important. Um, one of the issues with getting schools to clubs is finance. Unless they're walking distance like Essendon Primary, they've got to hire a bus, and buses cost. So um, we actually applied to Moody Valley Council um, for a, a local government grant. We bought 30 sets of junior bowls so that the kids have got something that's something that they can hold. Um, we bought small bowls with it. The kids have got something they can hold, something that looks 
more attractive than the old-fashioned black bowls that sort of somebody found when the, after Grandad died and they were cleaning out the shed and thought they'd give it to the local club. Um, and we actually got some grants to help assist um, assist schools get from the, the school the school base to the club. We don't pay the full cost of a bus; we offer them a, offer them a percentage. Um, the other thing that I guess I should I'd like to share is that working with working with schools and working with kids, and <coughs> particularly schools, is a very very slow process. Uh, you're not not going to see instantaneous results. You're not going to see great hordes of kids come suddenly come up to the green. Um, my attitude is, if I come along to Essendon Bowls Club and want to be part of something, then we'll organise something for it. If they want to go to Mooney Valley, good luck to Mooney Valley. They can bear the fruits of our labours. Um, if they go away and 30 years down the track they think, geez, that bowling program we did was a bit of good fun, and after they get their kids off their hands, they want to take up bowls and the seeds being planted, well, that's a benefit too. Um, uh, we've had some people at the club over the last several years who've had the role of uh, develop and coordinator, uh, including people who've represented Victoria and Australia, uh, really good bowlers, um, uh, somewhat younger than me, but then they move, you know, they get a job shift or something else happens. So our uh, engagement with schools, uh, mainly secondary, with a little bit of primary, over the last five years has been uh, a bit ad hoc and people have moved on. So I took on this particular role a year ago and the idea was that you'd be looking at the local community, uh, you know, families and uh, bringing in more local people. We've had a number of people travel to our club to play pennant, uh, but they, uh, they travel from a long way away. We had 12 from the Mornington Peninsula, our family from uh, Melton, and uh, it's not sustainable. You need, you need local people. So that was the driving force. We're going to look at local sports clubs, local businesses, local community organisations, and education was the other sector. But because we'd been higgledy piggledy and ad hoc, uh, the committee at the club weren't particularly keen on that. I went to a program, I think in March last year, at Thornbury, the primary schools program that Sean was running, and I said, well, look, I'm going to argue the point with the committee. I think this is the way to go. Uh, so what we've done, uh, uh, over the last you know, uh, six months or so, there's been a number of um, secondary schools that have come along for sessions. I think that engagement with the staff is really important, building that up, giving them the confidence to be able to run the programs with um, some support from myself or other club members. Uh, one really good outcome of that uh, was uh, half a dozen kids from uh, Fitzroy High School who were in year 10 when they came to me, about to go into year 11. Uh, said they want to uh, uh, go to a, uh, an under 18 program over the holidays. I think it was at the club called Churchill Waverley, under 18. <coughs> I said, fine, I'll organise some bowls for them. Uh, I said, we're not going to give you uniforms, but your Fitzroy High School shirt looks exactly the same as our uniform. Off they went, got their way down <coughs> there. They, uh, they took everyone's fancy and they, they got thrashed in every game. And on the way out, they said, we'll be back next year and we'll have more than two days' practice. <laughs> Since then, all of them have joined the club. We've given them a discounted social membership. They're bowling at the club at least uh, twice a week and they're looking to take part in far more competitions. One of our committee people said, do you think they'll be playing pennant soon? I said, ask me a different question. It just doesn't make sense. You've got to get them engaged, enjoying their bowls. What happens after that is what happens after that and it might be several years, as Wayne said. At the primary school level, um, the, um, our district uh, includes uh, bowls as part of the primary school program, so that's an advantage. And they do that in Term 4. In Term 4 last year, uh, in 2016 they'd done it, but again, we didn't have any real <coughs> engagement or control over it. They just booked the facility and the teachers ran it. Last year uh, we did it, there were five, five local schools, uh, we had 80, 80 kids, 75 to 80 kids each week, it was run on a Thursday afternoon for seven weeks. Uh, uh, myself and some other working with children club members ran it with some support from the teachers. 
Um, kids can get, um, you know, they don't always maintain their interest, they can be distracted, and that applies to teachers as well. Uh, so it's better, I think, if the club members are running it and the teachers are acting as a support crew rather than the other way around. Uh, we had a winning school, we had a trophy. We named the trophy after the local sports coordinator. I was very pleased with that. It was a presentation of the school, a write-up uh, in the, uh, the school newsletter plus offers. What we've done um, each week, <coughs> kids were nominated who'd shown the right attitude or some skill I were given, I think, uh, Sean produced some um, you know, water bottles and uh, later on we had some t-shirts and caps. So kids got some reward. We then invited those kids who'd been nominated. And the kids themselves from each school had to say who was our best representative over the seven weeks. Uh, we then invited those kids to join in a holiday program and become part of a junior development squad. Uh, we probably invited about 40%, which would be about 32 kids we've had about 12 acceptances and we've had we've got eight who are coming regularly it's continuing now uh, <coughs> once a week they're getting coaching and um, you know exploring the game of bowls there <coughs> what we've learned is you've got to tap into the competitive nature of kids and also tap into their creativity and the initiative they can show so they will often design the sort of program we're running uh, the sort of scoring system we're using uh, the challenges and drills that might be part of it. Uh, we also set up a family social membership and so we've got some of the parents who are also bowling with us and a couple of them have even indicated they might be interested in joining and playing on a more regular basis. So it's it's sowing a few seeds uh, that we hope will really uh, you know, bear fruit further down the track. And the other thing is the, uh, the winning school, I've spent a little bit more time there and uh, the staff are having their own bowls competition that's coming up soon and we're hoping to make that an inter-school uh, arrangement. There's no reason why that couldn't go broad, but we could have a uh, you know, school teachers um, statewide bowls, bowls tournament.